When something happens in our lives or we receive some type of information, there's a crucial moment between the instant we hear it and our reaction to it. This interval is essential because it's where we interpret the situation and define how it affects our identity. How we perceive and think about what happens around us can completely change our response. Let's consider a situation, your boss speaks to you in an ignorant and stupid manner. If you interpret this as a reflection of your own incapacity, you might end up feeling devalued and useless, likely leading to a negative reaction. We have no control over others' behaviors, and often people vent their frustrations on those they perceive as weaker. On the other hand, if you view the same situation as a challenge to overcome and see yourself as capable and persistent, your response will be much more positive and proactive. This interval between what happens and how we react is crucial because it is shaped by how we interpret events, whether we consider them good or bad, safe or threatening, and by the image we have of ourselves, such as someone who is competent or not, deserving or not. If we have a positive view of ourselves, our actions will be positive too. This is why it is so important to understand and work on our way of thinking. The way we react directly influences the outcomes of our lives. If we are dissatisfied with something in our lives, such as money, health, or relationships, often, it is due to our reactions and the mindset behind them. Understanding and adjusting our mindset can significantly improve our lives and help us achieve better results in all aspects of our lives. It is a process that involves self-awareness, self-control, and continuous adaptation. In this video, we will talk about four ways to begin this process, delving into the books of one of the greatest thinkers of Stoicism in history, Seneca. If you are new to the channel, help us bring this content to more people who need it. It's very simple, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment your thoughts on the exercises or how Stoicism has changed your routine. Know thyself. Each person acquires their character on their own, but chance controls their duties. Seneca. In ancient Greece, at the Temple of Apollo in Delphi, the famous phrase, Know thyself, was inscribed. This phrase encourages us to understand who we truly are, which is fundamental to living authentically, building our value, and contributing to society. According to philosopher Seneca, each person develops their own character, but circumstances often shape our duties and roles during life. He argues that while we can shape our character, many aspects of our life, such as our job, physical characteristics, and where we live, are often influenced by chance. He suggests that we should first understand ourselves well to identify our true capabilities and limitations. Then, consider what we would like to accomplish. According to him, we must know ourselves well to understand what we can truly do. Sometimes, people do not achieve all they could because they doubt themselves, do not believe in their abilities, and therefore fail to act. Or conversely, if they overestimate themselves, not recognizing their weaknesses, they do not seek to learn and continue without success, trying to do more than they are capable of. Therefore, it is important to honestly assess our abilities. Seneca describes four things that influence who we are and what we do, he says, our nature as rational human beings, our personal characteristics, the chance that affects our lives, and our own decisions and actions. All these factors shape our lives, our choices, and identities. Understanding these factors helps us live authentically, using our abilities in the best way, without trying to be someone we are not. Here's the translated and rewritten version of the text you provided, keeping the original meaning and information intact. The first factor that influences all of us is what we might call our basic nature as human beings. For the Stoics, this means recognizing that we are rational beings. Having the ability to reason sets us apart and enables us to understand the world around us. Thanks to this reasoning ability, we can analyze situations, make informed decisions, and act positively in our lives. The second factor consists of the unique qualities each of us possesses from birth, given by nature. These characteristics vary widely from person to person and can include physical talents, mental abilities, and personality traits. As Seneca noted, these innate qualities often stay with us throughout our lives. 
They form the foundation of who we are as individuals and influence how we interact with the world and others. People differ greatly in physical appearance, personality, and abilities. While some are naturally athletic, others may not be. However, the most significant differences lie in personality traits, such as shyness, arrogance, or impulsivity. Seneca discussed how these personal characteristics can affect where we best fit in. For example, he mentioned that extremely shy individuals might struggle in politics, which demands confidence and assertiveness. Join our stoicist journey at Buy Me A Coffee. Support with a donation or as a member and have a voice in our community. Every coffee fuels our mission to share wisdom. Be our pillar, make a difference today. Highly arrogant people may face challenges in environments that require humility or starting from scratch. Those unable to control their anger or who are sarcastic might end up saying or doing things that cause problems. Seneca believes understanding these traits is crucial because it helps us decide where to work or how to interact. He suggests that sometimes, avoiding certain professional environments is better than trying to fit into them. For instance, someone naturally impatient or arrogant should avoid situations that provoke these behaviors, as this can cause problems for both themselves and others. By knowing and accepting our characteristics, we can make more accurate decisions about our careers and social interactions, choosing paths that align with our personality. This helps us live more harmoniously and effectively. Besides our personal characteristics, other factors shape who we are and how we live. The third factor is chance, which includes things we cannot control, such as how we were raised, our parents' financial situation, and the quality of education we received. It's not just a good education or access that ensures an authentic life and allows one to build their value, but it significantly influences life, often opening doors that those without education must discover on their own. The fourth and last factor is our own will, namely the choices we make and the effort we put into achieving our goals. The decisions we make and the energy we dedicate have a significant impact on our lives. Here, everyone is equal, and we have the chance to truly make a difference by choosing our path and acting accordingly. The Stoics teach us to understand and accept these aspects of life. They say we should know our traits well so we don't fight against our nature or attempt things beyond our capabilities. Being authentic, living according to who we truly are, and building our value depend on this understanding. The Stoics also emphasize the importance of recognizing both the common characteristics we share as human beings and the unique qualities each of us has. It's important to consider both what we have in common with others and what makes us special. Following this philosophy helps us better understand ourselves and find our place in the world, respecting both our similarities with others and our unique differences. This is essential for living a full and happy life while learning to build our value. Self-consistency. Above all, strive to be consistent with yourself. For Seneca, living authentically means having a stable personality and a clear identity. Without this, a person might change their mind as often as the wind changes direction. This doesn't mean we need to act the same way all the time, but rather that we should maintain a consistent path in life. He uses a travel metaphor to explain this idea, it is crucial to have a clear direction where we are heading, instead of just wandering aimlessly. Imagine yourself in your car, driving for hours, getting nowhere because you're just driving. Or if you don't have a car, Consider a day when you leave home and take any bus without knowing exactly where it's going. It seems ridiculous when put this way, but if we think about it, we are doing the same with our lives when we lack a clear direction, a goal, or a purpose that guides us. Having consistency and direction is the result of having a true philosophy of life. A person who lives authentically, with an upright character, is distinguished by having a clear purpose and consistent motivation in their life. However, many people aren't sure what they really want until something awakens that desire in them. If we think about how often we buy things just because they're on sale, blowing the budget, or how most of the time we don't even have a defined financial plan, we act exactly as Seneca observes, instead of following clear plans, we are merely driven by impulse. Our value begins to be built when we respect ourselves, whether with our financial plan, fitness plan, 
with a project or the dream of having our own car or apartment. This shows how important it is to have a well-defined life philosophy to guide us constantly. Seneca comments that many people often change opinions and behaviors, which today we might call unstable behavior. He describes how someone might want one thing at one moment and something completely different soon after. For example, one moment someone wants to get married, and the next, they prefer just a casual date, Sometimes they want to manage everything and be an entrepreneur and at other times behave like a regular employee, working only during office hours. These changes are not just in big decisions but also in the way people present themselves to others. Seneca observes that people sometimes might spend a lot of money one day to impress others and the next day be in the red and wanting to save. For him, these abrupt changes indicate that the person does not have a well-defined identity or a stable mind. He believes it is important to have a consistent personality. According to Seneca, only truly wise people manage to maintain a stable character over time. Having a good character, for him, means being content with who you are, which leads to more consistent behavior. In contrast, a person with poor character changes frequently, not to improve, but merely to appear different, to please others and attract attention. Seneca sees this as a problem because such lack of consistency can be confusing to others and harmful to the person themselves. Therefore, Seneca advises that we choose a lifestyle and strive to be consistent in all areas of our lives. This helps to develop a strong and reliable personality. Another way to live with authenticity and consistency is to present yourself to the world as you really are. Seneca discusses how often people do not show who they really are to the world, and behave differently in public and in private settings. He compares this to wearing a mask, where someone might pretend to be something they are not, especially when other people are watching. The idea that when the camera turns on everyone seems happy, even if they are not. The problem with this attitude is that maintaining a false image can cause a lot of anxiety. Seneca believes that living with this constant facade is not a happy and peaceful way to live. He suggests that it's better to be rejected for being true to oneself than to suffer trying to maintain a lie. He also says that, to be authentic, people's actions should align with their words and beliefs. This simply means, do what you say, and, live as you preach. Seneca is critical of those who speak at length about morality but do not act accordingly, for him, philosophy should not just be for show, it must be lived through true and consistent actions. Encouraging everyone to be sincere, he says, let your words reflect your true emotions and your actions reflect your words. He believes that true authenticity is achieved when there is no difference between what people say and what they do. Intellectual freedom. We should not simply follow the herd in front of us, like sheep. Seneca, one of the great thinkers of his time, advocated for the idea that living authentically involves embracing intellectual freedom. Unlike some who approach intellectual freedom provocatively or arrogantly, Seneca did it with humility. He recognized that our knowledge is limited and that new discoveries will always arise to expand our understanding of the world. He believed that we should keep an open mind because science is constantly discovering new things. This shows how important it is to be curious and questioning, as each generation can contribute to the advancement of human knowledge. Seneca also thought that, over time, future generations would learn things that we do not know now, making discoveries that today we cannot even imagine. He said that our descendants would probably be surprised by things we did not notice, which will be obvious to them. He described past thinkers as those who paved the way for future discoveries, rather than exhausting the possibilities of knowledge. Therefore, for Seneca, the pursuit of knowledge is a continuous journey, where each generation adds more to what we learn from those before us. Seneca saw Stoicism, a practical philosophy, as something that should be understood and tested, not just blindly accepted. This is because Stoicism is not a religion based on beliefs, but a philosophy sustained by logical arguments. If the concepts of Stoicism make sense to you and can be applied in practice, you might find this philosophy useful for your life. But a true Stoic would never force anyone to accept these ideas without questioning. 
Seneca was also known for questioning and even criticizing other Stoic philosophers who came before him. For example, he found flaws in the arguments of Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, and criticized Chrysippus, another important Stoic philosopher, for using logic he thought was too abstract and weak. For Seneca, being a Stoic means being a critical thinker, not just a follower. And even while agreeing with the early Stoics, Seneca wrote, I also allow myself to make new discoveries, changes, and reject things when necessary. I agree with them, but I am not submissive. This is exactly the definition of our value, learning to think for ourselves and being able to add philosophies and ideas that help us advance in life. The early Stoics already knew that incorrect beliefs could cause mental suffering, and Seneca was the first to delve even deeper, explaining how these mistaken beliefs are formed through social influences and the way we are raised. He used an interesting metaphor to describe his approach to knowledge, although he followed traditional Stoic ideas, he was always ready to explore new paths if he found simpler or better ways of understanding things. He compared this to following an ancient road, but not hesitating to forge a new path if it was more direct and easier. Seneca saw the philosophers who came before him not as unquestionable masters, but as guides. He believed that the truth is available to everyone and that no one has exclusive control over it. Moreover, he encouraged the idea that there are always new things to discover, urging future generations to continue exploring and learning. Stoic Persistence There are thousands of cases of persistence overcoming all obstacles, nothing is difficult when the mind decides to resist. Seneca Imagine that you know yourself well and know exactly what you are capable of. You find a project or career that seems perfect for your skills and dive into it headfirst. But, things do not go as planned and the plan that seemed perfect ends in total failure. Although Stoics value patience and persistence, it is also important to recognize that sometimes changing direction may be the most sensible decision. Changing paths can be a way of demonstrating persistence, but in a different way. It's about turning a failure into an opportunity, adjusting your plans, and perhaps finding a new direction that is more promising. This is not a failure but a smart adaptation to circumstances. Persistence does not mean that you need to suffer, be masochistic, or insist day after day on banging your head against the same wall. Being persistent actually means continuing to move forward, but not necessarily in the same direction. Progress can take many forms and is not always linear. What is constant, however, is the movement forward, whether by adjusting the route or starting something new. For the Stoics, persistence is a crucial human quality, but it is important to understand that being persistent also involves knowing when it is time to change strategy. Recognizing this can be as important as the ability to persevere. Seneca wrote that, even after a poor harvest, one must sow again, frequently, what was lost to the poor soil due to prolonged sterility prospered in a year of fertility. Similarly, after a shipwreck, sailors returned to the sea. If we were forced to give up everything that causes problems, life itself would stop moving forward. Stoics believed that external things, such as problems or offenses, cannot truly harm a wise person, as long as that person maintains their virtue. Seneca wrote a lengthy work on this theme, called On the Firmness of the Wise, but it was initially titled, On How the Wise Person Does Not Accept to Be Hurt or Insulted. He explained that being invincible to a Stoic does not mean being free from physical pain or problems. Seneca recognized that even the wise can face physical violence, lose parts of their body, or experience great pain. However, for a Stoic, these are just unfortunate events, they are not considered true harm. What really matters to a Stoic is virtue, kindness, and character. The only way to truly harm someone would be to strike at these aspects of their character. To exemplify this idea of persistence, Seneca used the example of an athlete in the Olympic Games, who exhausts the opponent through patience and manages to defeat them. This story highlights how persistence, an important characteristic for Stoics, can be used to overcome challenges strategically, without compromising our own integrity. Just as someone trains to be physically resilient, a wise person trains their mind to have patience and resist criticisms of their character. 
Epictetus also compares this to an athletic competition. He says that if you fall during a competition, no one can stop you from getting up and continuing to compete. Even if you fail in an attempt, you can continue training and try again. And if you finally win, it will be as if you had never given up. Sometimes, just being able to keep trying is a great achievement. Stoics, like anyone else, face problems and challenges. What makes them invincible is not avoiding difficulties, but never giving up. They do the best they can in any situation, even in times of failure or financial difficulty. If knocked down, they will get up, dust themselves off, continue training, and move forward. This ability to keep moving forward, no matter what, shows the true strength of a Stoic. And if you've come this far, comment, I will invest in myself. This way, you confirm your change. Also, consider sharing this video with a friend who needs it. Thank you for watching.